Well, Saga will be sentenced on state charges on Friday. New Haven police have been ordered to release sealed information in the murder case of Yale University student Suzanne Joven. The State Freedom of Information Commission made its final ruling this afternoon. Channel 3's John Maroney attended the hearing in Hartford. He's joining us now live with more on the story. John? Denise, this has been going on for years, and while the New Haven police have been ordered to uh, release information about the investigation, it could be years before any of this material is seen by the public. We think uh, releasing much of this information, perhaps all of it, would be uh, devastating potentially to the investigation. The Freedom of Information Commission says the public is entitled to information about the investigation into the death of Suzanne Joven, the Yale student who was stabbed to death more than three years ago. The Hartford Current filed a request for information, as did a friend of James Vandeveld, one of the suspects in the case and a former advisor to the victim. Nothing here seems to indicate that this guy did it. And not only that, there seems to be things that just totally, you know, show that he, you know, he couldn't have done it or, or points in a different direction. The commission wants New Haven police to make 4,500 documents and a 911 tape public, rejecting arguments that their release could jeopardize the investigation. One is more than three years later, and they tell us they still don't know which of the 4,500 4, documents they will use. I think they're stretching it. Ellen Joven, the victim's sister, joined the city of New Haven in objecting to the disclosure of confidential information. Ms. Joven and her family and friends have uh, turned over to the police any and all confidential, private, personal information uh, about Suzanne that the police thought might have any chance of being helpful. Uh, why should anybody ever do that in the future? Now, today's decision does not mean that these documents will be forthcoming. The city of New Haven and other parties who might be interested have 45 days to appeal uh, this decision. The city of uh, New Haven said that it was taking it under advisement and uh, might quite possibly would appeal this uh, ruling. Denise. Okay, John Maroney reporting live tonight from Hartford. New information tonight in the three-year-old unsolved murder of Yale student Suzanne Joven. At an appeals hearing today, a Freedom of Information Commissioner upheld his decision, ordering New Haven police to release thousands of documents, including witness statements, memos, and a 911 tape. That request was initially made by the Hartford Current and by a friend of James Vandeveld. The man police say was in a pool of suspects. Vandeveld has maintained his innocence. The police department, though, plans to appeal. The former Yale professor accused of possessing child pornography was sentenced to 15 years in federal prison today. New Haven police will challenge an order from the State Freedom of Information Commission forcing them to release thousands of documents connected to the murder of a Yale University student. Suzanne Joven was killed in December 1998. Police have repeatedly refused to release the documents, saying it would damage their investigation of this unsolved murder. But as NBC 30's Grant Stinchfield reports tonight, while ordering the department to release the files, an FOI commissioner also accused a police officer of lying under oath. At issue, did the New Haven Police Department provide a private investigator full access to the case file of the unsolved murder of Suzanne Joven? In an October hearing about opening the file, a New Haven police officer testified in front of this Freedom of Information Commission it did not. But contradicting that officer, FOI Commissioner Dennis O'Connor, while reviewing the Joven file, says he found a police memo granting a private investigator, quote, full and complete access to the case. At this point in my review of the witness's testimony, I was skeptical. The commissioner even called into question the credibility of the unnamed high-ranking officer. We put that to police chief Melvin Waring. What, what's your reaction that the allegations of him lying under oath? Well, I, I don't know enough about that aspect of it at, at this moment. Uh, we have to look at the totality uh, of it all and see what it all means. I'll be talking with uh, attorney actor here and uh, try to work out, see what's, see what's... What about the officer? Will you be talking with him? talk with him every day and I'll continue to talk with him, Lieutenant Nolan. You have the full confidence in him? Absolutely. As for the request to release the case file, it was initially made by the Hartford Current and a friend of James Vandeveld. The man police say is in a pool of suspects. Vandeveld has steadfastly maintained his innocence. His friend Jeff Mitchell is upset with the officer, who O'Connor says gave false information to the FOI commission. Why bother to do that? It's just sort of symbolic of what they've done all along. Just be open and, and honest and, and release information. 
As for the Joven family, they support New Haven's decision not to release the files. Because New Haven is appealing, a final decision by the courts might not come for some time. I'm Grant Stinchfield, NBC 30 Connecticut News. Fifteen years in prison sentenced tonight for the former Yale professor accused of possessing child pornography.